So I started the year off by watching The Iron Lady. I really got sucked into the world of ice hockey. The director may not have delivered a groundbreaking alien action film, but he really did deliver some beautiful shots of Moscow. So the cast involves a very tanned Kevin Spacey and a very old looking Jeremy Irons. Fassbender was the only good thing about this film. And probably I should include his manly bits as well. The strong point of this film is the acting. I do now have a new woman crush. It was dull, it was boring, and they did it in Shakespeare language. And no one understands Shakespeare language unless they study it for years. J. Edgar, a man I knew nothing about. There is no reason why these kids should eventually like Jonah Hill's character, because he is a prat. Underworld, a vampire film for the mass that don't like Twilight. Oh, so Madonna's been getting quite a bit of stick about this film. What I got from this film was bad shirts and Clooney runs funny. If Anthony Hopkins can kill bears, I expect Liam Neeson to kill wolves. Plus, I didn't find Clive Owen annoying. He usually really irritates me, but in this, he's, he's good. Oh, I love Anton Yelchin's hair. From the trailer, I thought there'd be a lot more showbiz, and there wasn't. I now want a superpower. This is an actor's film by far. It's something actors aspire to be in. A film that they do for their own enjoyment, just to put on their CV, whether the audience will like it or not. If I ever wanted to become a torturer, which I'm not saying I will, but you know, if I ever fancied a career change, I now know that violence isn't the answer. I will just play this film on a loop till they want to gouge their own eyes out. It's kind of a guilty pleasure because I know everyone's like going, oh, Journey 2, you gotta put yourself through watching that. It was actually all right. So this film pretty much delivers the title. It's about a man on a ledge. She was incredible in this film and she, she really did a great job because the film wasn't great, but she carried it. She, she made it better. It was really refreshing to watch a film that felt real. You know, there was none of this glossy Hollywood going on. I'd forgotten how funny Ewan McGregor's accent is. I couldn't stop laughing because you can just hear him concentrating. I have to sound like Alec Guinness. I have to sound like Alec Guinness. I think the fact that it was a true story and the fact that I've never heard of this story before uh, helped. A Dangerous Method really started well, but then it just loses his way, which is such a shame because I was really enjoying it. You know, there's a really distinctive point where the film just falls flat. Good old Channing, bless him, he gets a lot of stick, but I'm going to put it out there and say that he was the best thing in this film. This is actually a phobia of mine, the woman in black. Extremely annoying and incredibly tedious. I think I'm the only one who actually thinks this one is better than the first one, which I really don't think it's hard to do. This is just such a charming film. A French film that is set in Arabia that is in English. They really needed to have fired the casting director. I just feel like I'm moaning all the time about films at the minute. I'm talking about dogs. It's just... It's just so weird that you, I'm reviewing a film and I'm rating how well the dog did. And I'm actually going to make this review really quick because the sun is behind a chimney. The driver is trying to put on a musical with a bunch of school kids whilst trying to do a Welsh accent. Still thinking about the film, still laughing about it. Buddy for one. Just hope Paul Rudd and Jennifer Aniston just stop making crap. Almost showed us that he is capable of being a talented actor. Just, just almost. There was glimpses. And it was really frustrating because you'd see these glimpses and you'd get really excited. You're like, yeah, you're doing it, you're doing it. And then it would just fall flat again and then for the rest of the film he'd look constipated. Each time Sean Bean would lose his gun straight away and it was like, you meant to be like this really big expert and you keep losing your gun. That's not very professional. Instead of it being incredible, it was rather tedious and dry. You know, it's films like these that actually make me wonder why I'm still doing the watch every film released in 2012 challenge. And then I find that their approach to acting just becomes naff. <laughs> in technical terms, naff. The only thing that I'd say was missing was some topless action from Channing. Mark Wahlberg is, well, Mark Wahlberg. The marketing really failed this film and they were making it out like this film was shocking, it's controversial, the Vatican will not like this film. I cried. It was just like, look at all our gadgets. He's playing this presenter who had this big blue wig on his head. He's got bright white teeth and he plays the 
scroll straight. Such a great drama. I loved how clever the jokes were. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I nearly fell off my chair. You really would have thought they learnt from the first film by now. The costume was absolutely fabulous. Probably would have been more entertaining watching Henry Cavill run for 90 minutes on a treadmill rather than watching this film. It was beautiful, I just thought... <laughs> really like how it plays on like the pastiche of horror. The main character though is oh, brilliantly socially awkward. I love it. There was no point to this film whatsoever. She's running and waving a gun around. That's the entire film. Ecstasy was pretty appalling. Taken in space! Doesn't sound like a British rom-com, it just sounds like a documentary. Chris Hemsworth is so pretty. When this film came out, I was just 11 years old. I'm going to review this like a chick. Take everyone! The only scene in this that is absolutely stunning in 3D is the ballroom scene. I couldn't actually think of a really great opening line for this, so I just thought I'd go with the title. Um, slipping. Big time. Save it for theatre. It's not funny. It's just awkward. Do we really need another Burton Depp? collaboration film. For the American viewers out there we've got Get the Gringo and for the British it's How I Spent My Summer Vacation. Personally I prefer the title Get the Gringo. This is just such a nice film. At least I can get into the water park for free. Just kept looking at each other like oh my god please make this stop. Really bizarre film. I really didn't get where this was going. He was just like I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy it. If you're talking about pregnancy and having babies, this film is way too glossy. That's not what happens, not that I'm an expert or anything. For me, Chris Hemsworth was the best thing in it. It's not just because he's very yummy. One of those films that comes along every now and again. If it had been a teenager, I probably would have enjoyed it. For a film that was made to answer questions, all it's done is formulate more. <laughs> Top cat. It was just like watching one big music video. Planes look more like spaceships. I don't understand why this film got made. I just think they went the whole wrong way about it. It's paranormal. I will cry if the door is open when I go to sleep. Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. I actually really struggled to stay away. I left feeling very motivated and inspired. It was like watching it for the first time. Oh my god, what the hell's going on? I got something visually fantastic but quite boring. In all honesty I found the film in bad taste. It goes off track very quickly. It made me want to do gambling. Everyone else was laughing and I was like well I don't understand why that was funny. British cinema has changed so much. It's going to be like Bridesmaids, it's a cast of Bridesmaids, oh a Bridesmaids, Bridesmaids. This wasn't joyful at all. I feel a little bit sick for liking this film. It's like Ooh, and then other bits it's like Ee! No offence to Doctor Who, but it was like watching a really long episode of Doctor Who. I don't even think that worked. I kissed a girl and I liked it. It was probably the one film where I allowed myself a toilet break. If we both weren't taken, I'd totally run away with Channing Tatum after seeing his moves. It's just such a cute film. The tone of the film was bizarre. I'm Batman. Why do you want to kill me? It was great for voice work. Just so foul mouthed. <laughs> Devin Bestick. Who plays Roddick is incredible. He is the star of the show. Who is this guy? Who is this English rant? It's a really fantastic moment where Anthony Hopkins does this amazing monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I doing like <laughs> Ricky Gervais? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Reno is quite the little spider monkey. Stunning animation, I was in awe of it. Expendables, a bunch of has-beens with very bad Botox. What I loved about it is the familiar, familiarity, la, 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 la. Yeah. familiarity <laughs> of the characters. <laughs> I just don't think slapstick is funny in this day of age anymore. It's going like this, all the other films that are in this review. Potato. It was just very bland. The only good thing about it was Billy Crooped. This cheeky head. Didn't laugh one. Don't buy your daughter a weird looking box that you can't open. Anna Karenina. How does he pull that face? <laughs> so what was that? Simple story, simple script, simple direction. Sometimes that's all the film needs. The lead actor would lip sync to the other actors. I went in with my guard up, believe you. <laughs> as bad, watch Top Gear. I'm seeing things that 
I do. I had all these zombie sounds and it's just sound, you know, they were coming out the speakers behind you and I just kept thinking, oh my God, there's a zombie behind me. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is incredible. And once again, deep breath. I actually want to slap Woody Allen. I came out blubbing. It is full of fluff. And I never thought I'd say that when it's based on a vibrator. Killing Them Softly is all about the cast. There's a line in it that says, I know what you're thinking, slut. And I was like, yes, that is what I'm thinking. Jack O'Connell was the only good thing about this film, really. Francois Clouseau is perfection or of an owner. Bah! Will Ferrell's idea of being funny is shouting aloud of nonsense, constantly kicking and screaming. Okay, so yeah, I, this, uh, I'm breathless. I can't even talk about him. They go from quest to quest. And there's no story. It seems like it gets confused with itself. I'd like to say that Taken 2 is so bad, it's good. But I can't. It is so bad, it's bad. <coughs> Bradley Cooper never disappoints me. Didn't really dig it. I actually just said dig it. I might as well have just been watching a travelling blog. Very philosophic. Really need to be a feature film, that's the question. So I don't know if Paranormal Activity 4 seemed worse than it was because I'd just seen the wonderful piece of work that was sinister. I have not laughed so hard at a film. I found the whole thing creepy. Oh, I hate that alarm. Walking down the street and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> People think I'm a mad woman. Incredible. I keep using the word incredible. I can't, I, my vocabulary is vocabulary is stuck. Found rust and bone way too messy. Argo is a really strong, powerful piece of work. Mashed potato, ba ba. Do the alligator, ba ba. Don't need to watch Kevin James rolling around naked. <laughs> Don't star in a film like this. All British gangster London film. <laughs> you just think it's gonna end and then it's like, now we got some more for you. Ginger hair, flat cap, they might as well have been holding some potatoes and dancing around a leprechaun. Hello, I am Alan Rickman. Bradley Cooper. <sighs> Seems like a competition of who can swear the most. Too much. Ah! Ah! La 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 la. Matthew Fox certainly has made a transformation, but that may have affected his acting skills. It's me, I'm Kathy. I've come home now. Whoa. Why is Santa Claus Russian? But obviously, it just wasn't my type of comedy. Guy from Richie Rich is in it. If I was going to make a film this would be it. Get out of my life! I just felt like this film was treading water. It's doing his best impression of Jared from Labyrinth. Actually loved Oliver Platt. So Undercover feels like a direct copy of Miss Congeniality. How dare you steal from the classic! Colin! Colin! Ah, uh, Tinkerbell. This really didn't need a cinema release in my opinion. Richard Bugger! The funny bits are all in the trailer. It does pose the question is why people don't turn their lights out in a car chase. We just had a ridiculously long setup. You know, if I fell over, my parents were like, what are you doing down there? Get up! Really interesting story, but I just didn't connect with it. I really don't want to end my 2012 reviews on a negative note because I really want to push forward and try to be more positive about films. So I'm going to leave it there. And finish challenge complete. I will take a bow. <laughs> I think I deserve that at least. <gasps> Seriously, I feel like a ton of bricks has just gone off my shoulders. Whew.